Rafe, I was wondering, the first time you went in for your costume fittings, yes. and they began putting the uniforms yes. on you, how did you feel? Well, two things happened. Um, the first thing that happened was that one of the costume assistants looked at me. I just had all my hair cut off, and I think I looked incredibly boyish. And uh, she looked at me and she said, I'm on good. No. So I felt, first of all, I felt really angry that I don't believe I wasn't, couldn't play this role. <laughs> I said, right, I'm going to get you. Um, and then I, when I put the costume on, well, the costume fittings, um, you have people around you, so you don't really have, have a chance to sort of feel it. But I think the first time that I put it on, on my first day of filming, and I stepped out of uh, this um, caravan onto the streets where we were uh, shooting, I did feel uh, those costumes make you feel powerful, and because of that, you feel good. It make, they make you feel good about yourself. I mean, they, I think they're the, they're the best uniforms, best designed uniforms in the Second World War. There are no other, maybe the Italians, but there's no other really uniform to touch it in terms of just aesthetic, you know. We have the, now, of course, we have these horrendous associations with them, but, you know, you can't deny the fact that they you learn they're like an amazing suit, you know, these wonderful flattering riding boots and breeches and the tunic and, you know, the, 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 the hat at an angle. And so as I have to admit that it, it felt kind of good. As the production moved along, did you notice a difference in the way the cast and crew uh, treated you as the shooting went along? Um, no, I mean, they were kind of, I think a lot of the uh, actors, um, Israeli actors that were there um, playing, pl playing prisoners in the camp, they would joke about what a complete bastard I was, but I think they knew that even though I may be a bit of a bastard, I wasn't as much a bastard <laughs> as he was. <laughs> so, uh, no, they, they were okay. I think M, M. Beth Davids, who plays Helen Hirsch, uh, I think she... Had a, she tells me she had a problem being around me, um, which I can understand because I had a couple of scenes I had to be, but it wasn't it wasn't really taken to heart. It was just I think, um, but 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 also, inevitably, kind of with with guys like that, people do build up. If you're I mean because it's not for real, it is mm. pretending. You know when you call cut, it stops. Yeah. But people kind of, kind of build up a weird affection for mm -hmm. the the nasty guy because uh, people have a fascination with evil. And so the, if the attitude changed, it was actually one of, I think, people enjoying what Armand Gert was going to do today in this scene. You know? <laughs> um, so it was a kind of funny, ambivalent thing. Playing such an evil character, mm. are you a little bit concerned that after the movie comes out and you're walking down the street that you might get some extreme reactions from people who've seen the film? Well, so far, people don't seem to recognize me, so I think I'll be safe. But um, maybe, I don't, I think I'll be okay. Now, shooting the film in Poland, how did the locals react to having uh, a big budget production in town? Well, on the whole, they reacted very positively. I think we must have um, brought in some kind of income for them. and. At, uh, and all the shops and bars and cafes and restaurants, once they knew you were from the Sh Spielberg film, they okay. were kind of very r friendly indeed. I mean, they desperately need um, custom, so they <laughs> weren't going to sneer at us. But there were incidents, not a lot, but one or two, where the sort of uh, the ugly head of anti Semitism <laughs> cropped up. Yeah. Um, so, but that, I know that a lot of uh, journalists have sort of have heard about this and are focusing on it, and it definitely happened. But it would be wrong to give the impression that we were surrounded by people hating us making a film about uh, about the Holocaust. That's not the case at all. No, I think I, th I think actually what happens is people are really fascinated by filmmaking, and they're less interested in the the content than they are about all the trucks and the machines and the lights and will they spot an actor that they recognise and where's Mr. Spielberg? And that actually. You know, I know it's glib, but it is much more the truth. There wasn't a sense of, oh my God, why are they doing this again? People are actually, it's because it has a sort of slightly fairground feel with all these big vans around and, you know, and it's a spectacle when some scenes when we drove through the streets with um, the trucks full of soldiers and stuff, people 
just came to watch because it, you know, it, it draws it draws attention. In the early days of, or not the early days, in the forties and fifties, when when color was first start being introduced with the Technicolor process, yeah. you know, a lot of actors had to do adjustments because they weren't used to working in color. Right. Uh, doing this in black and white. Yeah. Well, what adjustments did you find the cast and the crew making? I wasn't aware I had to make any acting adjustments um, at all. I was aware that the makeup and costume people had to see what how colors translated as tones on film and work with the lighting cameraman, Janusz. And one final question. Mm. We're doing a feature on the, uh, the advice that actors get. Can I imagine throughout your career people are always mm. giving you advice, whether it's some advice might be good, some might be bad, and hopefully you don't follow the bad advice. But mm. I'm just curious, what would you say is the worst piece of advice that anyone ever gave you about your career? Maybe not advice that you you followed, but just advice that made you kind of mad or, or laugh? Um, well, I think when I, when I was decided to be an actor, I, I joined an, an amateur youth group in, in London, and uh, when I told the, the guy who ran the group that I wanted to be an actor, he said, oh, don't do that, don't, don't, it's so difficult, it's so tough. You know, so many people are out of work, and which I know is true. But I think I think it's really silly to tell someone if they feel very strongly that they must do something to tell them because it's difficult not to do it. That that I think doesn't make sense.